let us learn the chapter minerals and rocks the earth is composed of various kinds of elements these elements are in the solid form in the outer layer of the earth and in hot and molten form in the interior about 98% of the total crust of the earth is composed of oxygen silicon aluminium iron calcium sodium potassium magnesium and rest of it is constituted by titanium hydrogen phosphorus manganese sulfur carbon nickel and other elements now the elements in the earth crust are rarely found exclusively that is only one type of mineral found in a particular area is not seen they are generally seen in combination with other elements to make up various substances now these substances are recognized as minerals even though the number of elements that make up the lithosphere are limited they are combined in many different ways to make up many varieties of minerals now there are at least 2000 minerals that have been named and identified in the earth crust but almost all the commonly occurring ones are related to seven major mineral groups and they are known as major rock forming minerals so the major mineral groups are silicates oxides sulfates sulfides carbonates native elements and halides talking about the first one and that is silicates now in chemistry a silicate is any member of a family of anions consisting of silicon and oxygen so we can say that silicates are mainly made up of silicon and oxygen now the silicates owing to their abundance on the earth make up the most important mineral class approximately 25% of all known minerals and 40% of the most common ones are silicates the igneous rocks that make up more than 90% of the earth crust are composed of virtually all silicates then comes the oxides oxides are chemical compounds with one or more atoms combined with another element oxides are called binary compounds of oxygen the examples of oxides are carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide calcium oxide carbon monoxide zinc oxide barium oxide water these are a few examples then it is sulfates sulfates contain sulfur oxygen and other elements these are transparent to translucent they are soft heavy and light colored then comes the sulfides sulfides also contain sulfur and a metal say arsenic antimony selenium tellurium so they all can substitute for sulfur then it is carbonates carbonates contain carbonate and other element these are soft and brittle example is limestone which is calcium carbonate talking about native elements now they form as individual elements this means they contain no other substances so we understand that they are 100% pure halides they contain chlorine 
fluorin and these are used as building blocks these are soft as well as fragile fragile means you can break it they are also soluble in water the native elements are commonly divided into three groups and they are metals in metal category it is platinum iridium osmium iron zinc tin gold silver copper mercury lead and chromium when it comes to semi metals it is bismuth antimony arsenic tellurium selenium non metals sulfur carbon now what are the physical properties of minerals well the physical properties of a mineral are controlled by its chemical composition and its crystal lattice that is whether they are three dimensional geometric patterns in which those atoms are arranged and bonded together now it is no coincidence that crystals of quartz are six sided while crystals of halite are cubic now this is because of the geometry of their crystal lattice quartz is hard enough to scratch glass and will not dissolve in water to any visible extent whereas halite will not scratch glass and it will easily dissolve in water now these are the differences due to different chemical composition of the minerals the sodium and chlorine by their chemical nature readily break their bonds and become dissolved ions in water whereas silicon and oxygen in quartz are linked by strong bonds so they don't dissolve in water now each mineral exhibits a unique set of physical properties therefore the main task in identifying a mineral is to determine its physical properties so talking about the first one external crystal form now the external crystal form of a mineral is determined by internal arrangement of molecules that is they can be in the form of cubes say for example aluminium nickel silver copper these are example of cubic faced in case of octahedron it is fluorite whereas when it comes to hexagonal prisms it can be tin zinc magnesium etc the next one is cleavage cleavage means tendency to break in a given direction producing relatively plain surface it is actually a result of internal arrangement of molecules now the way a rock breaks depends upon the internal arrangement of the molecules now these minerals may cleave in one or more directions and at any angle to each other say if it is halite they will split in three directions feldspar two muscovite one direction calcite two directions then it is fracture fracture is different from cleavage in some rocks the internal molecular arrangement is so complex that there are no planes of molecules so we can say fracture is a description of the way a mineral tends to break it is different from cleavage because they are generally clean flat breaks along specific direction now fracture occurs in all minerals even ones with cleavage although a lot of cleavage directions can diminish the appearance of the fracture surface now different minerals will break in different ways and leave a surface that can be described in a recognizable way so we can say the broken area is smooth it is irregular it is jagged it is splintery now these are some ways of describing fractures then it is luster luster is the appearance of a material without regards to color so it can be metallic silky glossy next comes the color color is based on the molecular structure say for example malachite azurite calcopyrite 
some minerals are colored by impurities for example because of impurities quartz may be white or green red or yellow in color the next one is streak streak refers to the color of the ground powder that is if i powder a particular mineral the color that we will finally get is what is streak so it may be of the same color as the mineral or it may be different if i take malachite it is green in color but it, and it gives green streak but if i take fluorite it is purple in color or green in color but it gives out white streak next one is transparency now i will say a particular mineral is transparent when light rays pass through so that objects can be seen plainly then it is translucent that is light rays pass through them but will get diffused so that the objects cannot be seen then it is opaque when i say opaque light will not pass at all then it is opaque so these are three levels of transparency so any mineral can be transparent translucent or opaque then it is structure particular arrangement of crystals say it can be fine crystals or medium sized or coarse grained so this is i'm talking about size of the crystals then it can be fibrous even when i say fibrous they will be separable divergent or it is radiating next hardness when i say hardness it refers to relative resistance to being scratched 10 minerals are selected to measure the degree of hardness right from 1 to 10 so they are talc talc is the softest then it is gypsum calcite fluorite apatite feldspar quartz topaz corundum diamond so in these 10 i can say talc is the softest and diamond is the hardest specific gravity when i say specific gravity it refers to the ratio between the weight of a given object and the weight of an equal volume of water now we learn some minerals in detail the first one is feldspar feldspar is mainly made up of silicon and oxygen silicon and oxygen are common elements in all types of feldspar sodium potassium calcium aluminium these are found in specific feldspar variety half of the earth's crust now is composed of feldspar it has light cream to salmon pink color and it is widely used in ceramics and glass making next is quartz it is one of the most important components of sand and granite it consists of silica and it is hard mineral virtually insoluble in water it is white or colorless and used in radio and radar then it is one of the most important components of granite and it is made up of quartz and feldspar next one is pyroxene it is green or black in color it consists of calcium aluminum magnesium iron and silica pyroxene forms 10% of the earth's crust and it is commonly found in meteorites amphibole aluminum calcium silica iron magnesium now these are the major elements of amphiboles so an amphibole is made up of these elements they form 7% of the earth's crust and again it is green or black in color now this is commonly used in asbestos industry hornblende is another form of amphibole next one is mica mica comprises of potassium aluminum magnesium iron silica it forms 4% of the earth's crust it is commonly found in igneous and metamorphic rocks 
and it is used in electrical instruments because it is a bad conductor of electricity and a good conductor of heat that is why these are used as insulators they are very commonly used in iron geysers etc olivine olivine is usually a greenish crystal often found in basaltic rocks magnesium iron and silica these are the major elements of olivine now this is generally used in jewelry other minerals are chlorite calcite magnetite hematite bauxite barite these are also present in some quantities in these rocks